What's up guys and welcome back to another episode in my Red Dead tip series. Today I'm going to be showing you 20 more advanced things that you didn't know you could do in Red Dead Online. And thank you guys so much for the support on the last few episodes. When you guys leave likes and comments saying they helped you out, it really makes these videos worthwhile. So let's get right into the first tip. If someone lassoes you in Red Dead Online, there's actually a very quick and easy escape. All you need to do is pull out your weapon wheel and select the knife. The knife will be the only thing available on your weapon wheel while you're being lassoed and you'll be instantly cut free. This is a really awesome trick that will really catch people off guard because not many people know you can do this right now so a lot of people think you're they're untouchable if they have you within their lasso. So you can really surprise a lot of people with this. This trick will not work once you're actually hogtied, so you want to be quick with this one while they're reeling you in because once they actually hogtie you and tie your hands behind your back, you're not going to be able to use your knife to escape. When you're completing challenges in Red Dead Online, did you know that you can actually reset these for additional rewards? So once you complete a challenge set, you'll receive a buckle as a reward for doing so. However, some of these can actually be reset and you start to earn gold nuggets from completing them again. So to reset any of your challenges, just go to Start, Progress, and then click on your awards. And once you reset, you actually get to keep the buckle you unlock, and you start to earn gold nuggets on top of that. And 100 gold nuggets basically gets you a gold bar. Now you're not able to do this for every single challenge that's on the award page, but keep an eye out for the ones that you have completed and that you can reset. If you've managed to hunt two perfect carcasses and want to transport them both back to the butcher, there's actually a much faster way to do this than having one in your horse and carrying the other and running on foot. What you can do is use your lasso on the dead animal and drag it to the butcher. Surprisingly, this does not damage the pelt at all, so you can drag it all the way to the butcher and then skin it there and you still have your perfect pelt and perfect carcass. Now it's important that you do this skinning at the butcher because if you, for example, skin a deer first, you won't be able to use the lasso trick to drag it to the butcher. You can only um, latch on and drag animals that have been killed before they're skinned. There's actually a very easy way to hunt large animals such as deer and always get perfect quality pelts. What you need to do is just use your lasso on them like you would to break any wild horse and reel them in and just use your knife on it when prompted. This is a great method if you haven't already unlocked the bolt action rifle to get clean kills on elk and deer and you can use this trick to hunt their perfect pelts and carcasses very easily. The fastest way to increase bonding with your horse is actually to lead it. So to do this you want to get off of your horse, stand near the front of it and interact with it and hit the lead button and basically you'll grab the horse's reins and you can just walk anywhere with it and this is by far the fastest bonding XP and you can actually max your horse bonding level all the way up to level 4 in just about half an hour. So if you purchase any new horses in Red Dead Online, this is a great way to quickly get to level 4 bonding. This next trick will allow you to avoid the skinning animation and really speed up your hunting efficiency. All you have to do is just kind of park your horse close to an animal and it'll block you from being able to do the normal skinning animation and it'll give you the pelt way quicker. This trick also worked on Red Dead Redemption 1 to skip the skinning animation there, so it's pretty nice to see this, this trick has also returned in Red Dead Redemption 2. When you're on your horse, however, just make sure you walk over the kill very slowly. If you're galloping over a kill at full speed, you're going to damage the animal, making it a poor pelt. So just make sure you very slowly move your horse on top of it or right next to it. Did you know there are three types of every emote in Red Dead Online? Most people just tap the button once and use the standard emote, but if you actually double tap the button, you'll do an alternate animation. Usually they're quite exaggerated when you double tap them. I personally like the shoot 'em up animation, it's pretty awesome. And then the third type of emote you can do by holding down the emote button, and you'll basically do the emote on repeat until you let that button go. And while you're doing this, you can also press right trigger to do a flourish move. So if you guys see any other friendly cowboys out there, be sure to show them some awesome emotes. Just like in the single player, you can loot saddlebags in horses. There's a saddlebag on each side of the horse that you can loot, and just be careful to calm the horse down so it doesn't boot you in the face, like it does to me in the gameplay here. 
Now the best thing about these saddlebags in Red Dead Online is they're actually a huge resource of provisions and these are provisions that are very hard to loot from enemies so you'll get a lot of tonics, bitters, snake oil. These are all very expensive when they're bought from a store and for some reason the saddlebags on horses seem to give a whole load of these resources. This next tip was found by Lovely Waffle but you can actually spot gang hideouts from a far distance by the smoke especially if there's no mountains or obstacles in your way, you can actually see really far into the distance and these bandit camps will be active by the smoke coming out of them and you can see them from very far away before the map actually tells you they're there. If you guys haven't already, I made a whole video showing how to farm treasure maps in Red Dead Online using these bandit camps, so this is another great addition to that method. I'll have that video linked on screen in case you guys missed it, but you can make a lot of money from getting these treasure maps. If you guys are tired of this scrawny nag always spawning when you call your horse, you can fix this by hitting left on the D-pad, clicking stables, and then selecting your horse. If any of you guys have been stuck with this scrawny nag, then you're going to know how much this horse sucks, so this is going to save you having to always visit the stables. We're just about halfway in this video, but if you have enjoyed it so far, I'd really appreciate if you guys could just take a few seconds to leave the video a like, and also subscribe if you are new, because I post a lot more Red Dead Online videos like this. Alright, moving on to the next tip. Many of the haircuts in Red Dead Online aren't actually available in the character creation menu, but they can be accessed by using hair pomade. I hope that's how you pronounce it. I believe only male characters can actually use hair pomade, but you can apply style changes to your haircut, and then you can apply and head to a barber to kind of preview the rest of the haircuts available with this pomade. And as you can see, these are different haircuts than were actually available in the character creation menu. In Red Dead Online, there are four main missions hidden behind your honor status. So if you go into your progress and see your main story progress is stuck at either 75% or 87%, but don't have any more main missions marked on your map, this means that you have to change your honor to actually unlock them. So there's two missions that will unlock if you have positive honor and two missions that are locked behind having negative honor. So if you started Red Dead Online and have only been a good guy, then you will never have been notified about the other honor missions. So you might need to change your ways in Red Dead Online to unlock these. I believe you need to get around 75% positive honor to get that one and then about 75% negative honor to get that negative one. This next tip is to do with provisions. Now first of all you want to get yourself some big game meat. I believe you can get this from deer and a bunch of other animals in the game that you can find. Now when you head over to your camp and cook them, you can actually cook big game meat with organo, thyme and mint to actually give you temporarily golden cores when you consume them. Now depending which herb you use when you cook it, it will give you a different benefit. I decided to go for big game meat and thyme which gives a temporarily gold bonus to your Deadeye, which of course is very handy. If you find yourself hitting into trees or obstacles very often and going flying over your horse, then this next tip might be for you. So if you've ever tried to ride between two trees or two obstacles and you found your horse actually pulls you headfirst into one of them, this is because your horses actually guide you when you're heading towards an obstacle. So if you're pulling the direction stick when you're heading towards an obstacle and your horse pulls the other way, this might cause you to head right into a tree because you're essentially fighting against the horse. The best thing you can do when you're going through narrow areas or through trees is to just completely let go of the left analog stick and your horse will guide you around trees. You will not hit any of them. And even if you do brush against one, you won't actually fall off when you're not holding the left analog stick. As you can see in the gameplay, I'm basically riding full speed through a forest and not hitting any of these trees. And this is because I'm not touching the directional stick, so I'm not fighting against the horse. If you have the Red Dead Redemption 2 companion app installed on your phone, you can actually use the map on your phone while you play the game on your console. The best thing about this, the game will actually show on your phone the locations of the other players in your session. A big thanks to No Beardy for this amazing tip. He was actually using it for fishing since fishing in Red Dead Online removes your mini-map and you can't see if any other players are beelining for your position, so it's very handy to keep an eye on that map around you. The next tip is that you should never fast travel in Red Dead Online. In the current economy, it is just ridiculously expensive. 
it is almost not worth fast travelling at all. If you do want to transport across the map, a free way of doing so is to go into your settings, online, and then change location. This will put you into a new session, but will spawn you in a different state. You can travel to all five different states on the map, and it will quickly transport you into that area. If you press left in the D-pad, go to stables, you can actually select which horse you'd like to use as your default horse in different scenarios. So if you own multiple horses, this tip is going to be very useful. You can actually choose your default horse for your racing missions, for, mi for normal missions, for events, and even your default free roll horse. I've seen a lot of people online when they hunt large animals such as deer, they'll sell the whole carcass because they think the carcass is more money. However, you should always skin your kills. It will always generate more money than when the animal is preserved. And this is because when you skin an animal, you not only get the pelt, but you'll also get the meat parts that can be sold. Sometimes you'll get extra things like antler horns and extra parts that can be sold to the butcher. And then you also get to keep the carcass. So all in all, all of the parts actually add up more than selling the intact animal. If you want to regenerate your cores, all you need to do is head over to your camp. When you're inside your camp, it will actually regenerate all of your cores up to 75%. And then if you rest by your campfire, it will regenerate your cores up to 100%. I believe the speed that it does this depends on your current tent level. So if you've upgraded your tent, it will be faster. So if you want to save on food or provisions, this is a great way to restore your cores. And the last tip I have for you guys is that you can slap your horse's ass with the B button. You can use this to get rid of your horse quickly, or I guess if you simply enjoy slapping horse's asses. Alright, so that was 20 more tips and tricks for Red Dead Online. I hope you guys learned a few new things in this video. If you did, I'd really appreciate if you could share it with a friend and show some love in the video. And if you want some more tips, I'll also have the last few episodes linked on screen in just a second. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.